Hi, my name is Heather Vokush, and thank you so much for joining us. Now, five years after the housing market collapsed, thousands of New Yorkers are still in danger of losing their homes. But it can be extremely daunting to deal with backlogged courts and complicated foreclosure processes. And somebody who has no legal training, you know, this is, is just very, very, very difficult. Well, thank goodness that there are you know, some options within New York to help people deal with that. And we are delighted today to be joined by Jay Kim and Karen Gargamelli, who are co-founders of the, and, and staff attorneys at New York's Common Law. And they have been working on foreclosure prevention since 2007. And they work very, very closely with a very, very interesting group called Foreclosure Resisters. And so what we're going to do today is talk a little bit about this problem and also some things that both individuals and communities can do to um, help themselves and to help others. So without further ado, thank you so much for having joined us. We really appreciate that. Thank, thank you for you. having us. Yeah. So can you, before we start, can you give us a little bit of background about what is, what do you do, mm -hmm. basically? Sure. Uh, so Jay and I are staff attorneys at a small nonprofit, mm -hmm. and the bulk of the work that we do is this Tuesday night legal clinic. Okay. So we meet with homeowners who are representing themselves. Mm -hmm. It's pro se is mm -hmm. the term given to people representing themselves in court. Okay. And so we provide intensive training, mm -hmm. so education, information, a look at the foreclosure process, your rights, your options in foreclosure, but we do everything as a group. So you are going through this educational programming with other homeowners mm -hmm. who are in foreclosure. People are able to add their own experience so that it isn't just the law or the regulations or the mm -hmm. policies, but people saying, oh, I went to that judge and this is the experience that I had, or mm -hmm. I submitted that motion and this is what happened to me. Okay. So that is what makes it really dynamic and powerful. Mm -hmm. We also provide individual support for homeowners. So we're gonna help them write those motions and, and submit what they need to submit as individuals. Mm -hmm. But the best part is when we prepare for a court appearance. Okay. And so we have something called court support. And okay. maybe Jay, you wanna explain a little bit about what that is? Actually, even before we get to that, I'd like to know more about these Tuesday night, I believe, uh -huh. you said meetings. Mm -hmm. And so how many people go? We usually have about four new homeowners every week, but also homeowners who've been coming week after week just to provide support for other homeowners come. So we okay. usually have about eight to 12 people in the room okay. um, every Tuesday night. And where is this held? It's Tuesday nights. We're actually fortunate enough to work out of the offices of NESRI, okay. uh, National Economic Social Rights mm -hmm. Initiative. They've donated their space for us. Our okay. office is actually in Queens, which is quite far mm -hmm. for folks in Brooklyn and in the Bronx. And so we use this space in Manhattan on Tuesday nights. And Tuesday nights at what time? Mm -hmm. 6.30 to 8.30. And anybody can walk in the door? We asked them to call first. Okay. Right? Yeah, make an appointment. So people would look at your website. Mm -hmm call and mm -hmm. there's information there regarding you know these Tuesday night meetings mm -hmm. and then once they've done that they can show up mm -hmm. exactly. and they don't pay anything to do no, that. No, all of our services okay. are free. Okay, and so it's basically, I believe you said 6.30, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Starts at 6.30 and so they get information, they get right. a sense of community mm -hmm. you know, exactly. involved in that. Exactly, so the okay. first hour is that. It's legal okay. education, it's community support and the second hour Karen mm -hmm. and I meet with individuals separately Okay, um, and that's why we ask that folks call us we can schedule an appointment because obviously with two folks mm -hmm. we yeah. could only see a few people in a night okay and mm -hmm. that's all done pro bono yeah yes. okay that's right. amazing and okay. that's the mission of our organization so mm -hmm. common law you know the name of our organization uh, reflects our work which is mm -hmm. legal education and sharing what we know as attorneys it's mm -hmm. to make the law common mm -hmm. and so the bulk of Tuesday nights like Karen said is to mm -hmm. share information and education mm -hmm. for homeowners and foreclosure. I'd like to know how did you two meet? Sure. <laughs> so we met in law school. Okay. Uh, Where? At, so the CUNY School of Law. Okay. So uh, it's a public interest school its mm -hmm. only mission is to do public interest work. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so as we were graduating uh, in our third year of law school looking at what kind of work would we do mm -hmm. we had interned at various institutions mm -hmm. and felt that it you know, the work that we wanted to do was really education-based. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We be believed that this division between attorneys and clients mm -hmm. wasn't helpful or actually promoting justice, that it was keeping people away from understanding what was happening to them and mm -hmm. understanding things on a policy level or making changes. It was, okay. it was actually stopping organizing from happening. This mm -hmm. idea of, well, we have to go see a lawyer, 
They're mm -hmm. going to learn this mystical language and translate only what we need to know. Their own, whatever we know is only what they tell us. Mm -hmm. And we'll have to pay money we don't have. Yeah, and, yeah. exactly, <coughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so lots of people, you know, this is not something that just the two of us understand, right? Yeah. Most people in law school, everybody who's a lawyer, right, the, and people that are non-lawyers, mm -hmm know that this system doesn't really work. Mm -hmm. and that it's Well, it works for some. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, it does. Yeah. It works gives some cash, but yeah. it doesn't yeah. work for the homeowners. <laughs> exactly. So you guys were students in, in, in CUNY. Right. Okay. And so as we're thinking about the work that we're going to do the mm -hmm. following year, we mm -hmm. had a dinner party. We called together, I would say there was 15 or 20 people on this list. Okay. People that had been having similar conversations. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, what are we going to do? How okay. are we going to do the work that we believe in? Mm -hmm. um, and we were all in the same class together. We were all taking civil disobedience together. And civil right. disobedience, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it was based <laughs> on those readings too that we're having these right. conversations about what we wanted to do oh, after fabulous. we graduated from law right. school. Oh, the limits of the law and how we believe that we, as uh, progressive people, ah. can act within this framework. So ah. we have this dinner party. It's uh, during the third year of law school, and only three people came to the dinner party. And you were two of them? Yeah. <laughs> Mike, who is the third co-founder of Common Law. Okay. <laughs> so the three of us, you know, w we didn't waste any time. <laughs> um, we had the conversation that we meant to right. have, which is yeah. what are our visions for mm -hmm. an alternative way to lawyer? How do okay. you be a progressive people's lawyer mm -hmm. in New York City? Mm -hmm. um, and the things that we talked about that night are very different than maybe what common law looks like right now, but mm -hmm. the values are the That's same. Right. The mm -hmm. values were always to be community-based, right. um, legal education, support organizing. That's yeah, right. so I, I think the values, the core values mm -hmm. that we talked about that night, mm -hmm. we live out on mm -hmm. a day-to-day -day basis with common law, and that was, that was six years yeah. ago. It was wow. six years ago that we had this conversation. I find that so inspiring because I think a lot of people would say, okay, how can I make the most money on Wall Street? On R Wall Street, you know, I've, yeah. I've got this money. And then right. you guys were saying, hey, you know, we want to, what I like about what, I like everything about <laughs> what you do, actually, I find it very, very inspiring, but it's not only that you provide support mm -hmm. and advice, but you are helping communities organize themselves. Right. Mm -hmm. And that is a very powerful tool. Mm -hmm. exactly. and it, a lot of uh, legal areas just don't do that, and so I find that very interesting. Now, you had brought up the topic of court support. Mm -hmm. Can mm -hmm. you mention that? Sure. So our legal clinic is for homeowners who are representing themselves, mm -hmm. which means that they have to go to court and defend the motions themselves. They have to argue in front of a judge. And so what we do at the clinic mm -hmm. is we essentially moot homeowners. We mm -hmm. practice. We role play as judges. We role play as bank's counsel, and we uh. practice. Um, and we come up with talking points and strategies for when we go to court. Mm -hmm. On the day of the court appearance, we organize other homeowners who've come through the clinic, and we go together as a group to provide support for the homeowner, oh. and also to be a visible presence in the courtroom in front of the judge. We have these orange buttons that say court support, so oh. the judge can clearly see right. that this homeowner is supported by community. Okay, okay, but I'm, I'm just thinking about that. You've got a judge, you've got a homeowner supporting mm -hmm. him or herself, uh -huh. and who's on the other side? Like banks? The bank's attorneys. Yes, exactly. Yeah, because that is so not fair. <laughs> you uh -huh. know? Yeah. But you'd you know. be surprised. <laughs> yeah. you know, we've had a lot of victories at our clinic, and uh -huh. homeowners from our legal clinic repeatedly argue much better than the bank's That's attorneys. Right. And <laughs> That's we've right. had a lot of victories. I think okay. what you see in court mm -hmm. is um, very much a, a microcosm or a, a symptom even mm -hmm. of what's happening sort of l on a large scale. Okay. There's a lot of incompetency, there's a lot of people paying other people to do jobs, passing okay. the buck, mm -hmm. okay. miscommunication, right? The sort of what you see in court mm -hmm. is a, a representation of what's happening behind the scenes, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the person that shows up in court has no stake in what's happening, right? Mm -hmm. They don't care about the homeowner's house, they don't mm -hmm. care about this individual homeowner, they're never gonna see them again. Right. It's gonna be a different attorney next time. They're only mm -hmm. hired to be there for the day. Mm -hmm. They're gonna pass the information along to some sort of entity mm -hmm. or some sort of person that they don't know where that information's going and that information may never make it back mm -hmm. to whomever mm -hmm. makes decisions. I think that kind of impersonalization and detachment would have to be necessary because if you know that this person is gonna lose their house and their life savings, you know, it's just, it's so you dramatic. Would think. You would think, <laughs> exactly. You would think, but, but maybe. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. People feel so <laughs> pretty righteous about contract law. Can you tell us like how many people are facing foreclosure mm -hmm. now in New sure. York? Yeah, I mean thousands. I mean for a while there were 15 new foreclosure filings in New mm -hmm. York City alone. Mm -hmm. 15,000. Um, yeah, 15,000. 15,000 
per new foreclosure actions every year every in New year. York City. Okay. I think we just read an article the other day that said that the foreclosure rate nationally is going down percentage wise. That's mm -hmm. about 4% of all mortgages. But mm -hmm. in New York State, the number is almost double that. It's about 8% oh. because these foreclosures are getting stuck in the system. Okay. Um, all foreclosure actions in New York State have to go through the court system, unlike some other states mm -hmm. where um, there is no judicial process. Okay. And so in New York State, you know, one of the reasons that we do court support and why we support homeowners representing themselves is mm -hmm. that when we started out doing this work five years ago, there was a 90% default rate, which meant 90% of homeowners weren't showing up in court. Mm -hmm. oh, the banks were just okay. winning 90%. So the very act of even appearing in court is yeah. an act of resistance for right. the yeah. folks that we That's work right. with. Exactly, 90% default rate. Do you have any idea what it is now? I don't. Oh. It's significantly less. Yeah. Um, you know, since we've started this work, mm -hmm. um, the you know New York State Legislature has reacted to the mm -hmm. foreclosure crisis and mm -hmm. implemented a series of court rules mm -hmm. um, that have allowed changes, mm -hmm. that have allowed for a lower default rate, and we've certainly seen that to be true. But more I mean notices, mm -hmm. right, more notice to homeowners mm -hmm. and borrowers, uh, more informal court hearings, mm -hmm. more in cor informal court proceedings that have but made it more inviting. It not effective. Mm -hmm. <laughs> more people showing yeah. up, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but not getting anywhere. For me, though, it feels so inherently deeply unfair just to say, okay, you know, here's the bank, you know, mm -hmm. and, and here's you, you know, I right. mean, it's, it's right. just a silly system. It's it silly. Is. It's, it's corrupt, it you is. know, I would say. Oh, go ahead. Just go because ahead. the answer is to mm -hmm. regulate the banks mm -hmm. and to have a policy, right? This was a, a community-wide problem. People were p targeted for subprime and predatory mm -hmm. loans. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't the response mm -hmm. be on a policy level to change the systems mm -hmm. and to protect homeowners? Right. But what you're saying is mm -hmm. exactly right. Instead, mm -hmm homeowners as individuals need to come to court and defend yeah. themselves against the banks, which yeah. is crazy. Yeah, right? and it's, it's deeply unfair and, it it, and it's rigged. But that leads to another area that you guys do, which is great, and you also go after the banks. That's you right. know? <laughs> so, which I, I find this so inspiring. You got, you know, two women and they're just like, <laughs> I mean, you guys are amazing. So can you tell us what you did with Wells Fargo? We do lots of different things, right? Yeah. So the on a very basic level, we believe that story sharing is sort mm -hmm. of where everything starts. Okay. Right? So we gather as homeowners in foreclosure uh, in the two of us mm -hmm. uh, once a month. Okay. And a big part of what we do is share our stories, okay. right? And so understanding how this happened mm -hmm. and then seeing commonality, okay. right? We both have Wells Fargo, we both have Bank of America, uh, all 10 of us have Wells okay. Fargo, all 20 of us have Bank of America, right? Okay. Making these connections and actually the same lines were used on me. I was induced into getting this mortgage the same way. Oh, okay. And so those stories are sort of the basis mm -hmm. for how we start this fighting back. Mm -hmm. But then we're able to join with other campaigns that are happening. Mm -hmm. So on two different occasions, we worked with the uh, New Yorkers for Responsible Lending and mm -hmm. also for the New Economy Project. We worked with the two okay. organizations with two different campaigns. One mm -hmm. to target shareholders mm -hmm. of the big banks, uh, which is amazing. So when they were having their shareholder meetings, ah! <laughs> uh, proposing new legis new um, ah. regulations and new resolutions mm -hmm. that would change the way that those banks worked, mm -hmm. and using the homeowner stories mm -hmm. uh, to share directly their stories with the shareholders. So okay. that was one one way that we did it, uh, and with the larger piece about um, regulation generally mm -hmm. the, um, in Wells Fargo. Mm -hmm. So Wells Fargo was up for reaccreditation under the Community Reinvestment Act oh. and making sure that they got a failing grade. So using our testimony, so mm -hmm. what was a story mm -hmm. uh, of, um, of isolation and shame mm -hmm. to a story of uh, empowerment and fighting back and then using those stories in key places to get mm -hmm. to where we needed to go. And you won. So uh, in both of those, the campaigns mm -hmm. were successful, that they okay. did what they were supposed to do. Okay. Uh, in a very, in a different level, on an individual level, mm -hmm. so cases like the Citibank case or Wells Fargo, Bank of America, and in individual homeowners, mm -hmm. were able to use the homeowner's story and mm -hmm. bring it effectively to the judge to get what we need, mm -hmm. which most often for us is going to be actions dismissed mm -hmm. or major reductions in fees that homeowners are getting racked up against homeowners. Okay, super, super. So let's say <laughs> let's say I'm a homeowner, right? And um, I am, you know, possibly going to be foreclosed on. I don't know what to do. I'm freaking out. Right. What should I do? <laughs> After I call you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but what should I do? You know, I am freaking out. Right. Well, you should stop freaking out. <laughs> 
first of all. Um, if you call our office, mm -hmm. we'll orient you to the mm -hmm. foreclosure process and talk a little bit about what we do at the clinic, okay. and then we'll invite you to come to the clinic at a scheduled time. Mm -hmm. Um, most homeowners are in that place, right? Mm -hmm. Most homeowners are nervous. Mm -hmm. They don't want to answer the door. Mm -hmm. They don't yeah. want to answer the phone, right? Yeah. Um, but we find that most homeowners, when they do make that first step to seek help, mm -hmm. and we speak with them, and we engage with them, and they come to our legal clinic, mm -hmm. it's a transformative experience to be around other homeowners for going through that same process mm -hmm. and are actually winning. Mm -hmm. Right, um, and it becomes a safe community space where they can talk about that experience mm -hmm. um, and have other people to support them along the way. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the basic things that we do at our legal clinic is to talk about that foreclosure process, to let people know that it is through the courts. The average foreclosure action takes about four years <gasps> from beginning to end. Four years? Mm -hmm. Right. So it gives you a lot of time to plan your next move, mm -hmm. right, and to think about your options. Mm -hmm. The flip side of that is what Karen was talking about mm -hmm. is in New York State, when you're in court, your arrears keep growing. The mm -hmm. amount of money that you owe in interest and fees and costs gets yeah. bigger and bigger. So yeah. that four-year process will protect you. You're not going to mm -hmm. be thrown out of your house tomorrow, okay. but it does have the side effect of also making it harder for you to settle with the bank because mm -hmm. the amount of money that you owe mm -hmm. while this in very, very slow and congested court process goes on mm -hmm. gets bigger. Mm -hmm. And why does it take so long? A lot of it's volume. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. um, and the court system I don't know if you've gone through court before, but you show up in March, the other side isn't ready, you get an adjournment till June. You show up in June, you're still working things out, we're gonna push it till September. You show up in September and then there's a decision mm -hmm. on one motion. Okay. And then <laughs> you're gonna try another motion and then they're gonna show up in December and it's gonna get adjourned and then you're, okay. you're into the next year. Yeah. So it's the volume plus the way that the court system works, it's, it, it's a very slow, Mm -hmm. system to begin with. Mm -hmm. So in and of itself it feels that part would feel very disempowering but I think that the community that you guys mm -hmm. help create is really important also because people can understand well it's not only me I didn't only you know I didn't screw up there was something systemically wrong you exactly. know and I can do something now I it, basically it's empowering people I would say mm -hmm. you know yeah, at many exactly. levels. Yeah exactly. We definitely agree with that. I mean part of it is changing the narrative right mm -hmm. so Homeowners feel ashamed, they mm -hmm. feel embarrassed about what happened, as if they did something wrong. Because yeah. the narrative out there is that you, s you got a loan, yeah. right? Hey. You should have known what you were signing, you should have yeah. understood what these terms are. Yeah. But that's not really what happened, as we, as the three of us know, right? right? It's a systemic problem. Nobody on Wall Street has gotten prosecuted for what happened. Mm -hmm. The banks continue to get bailed out. Mm -hmm. Homeowners have gotten very little assistance. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the foreclosure resistors. <laughs> <laughs> you love the foreclosure we resistors. Do. They we seem do. like an amazing group. So they can are. you tell us about them? Yeah. Sure. So um, Jay was talking a little bit before about the clinic. So mm -hmm. folks come through this clinic. It's a very intensive process, mm -hmm. right? You are learning all of a sudden about where you've, you've been in foreclosure for three years mm -hmm. and you've been confused and isolated the whole entire time. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden there are other people, there's some clarity, you mm -hmm. understand the way that you're going to get out. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's an intensive transformation. Mm -hmm. Also, you're going to court and that experience is very intense, right? Oh and, yeah. and then 10 people have gone with you and so there's a lot of community. And then all of a sudden the next court date is in seven months. Mm -hmm. And so people, are gonna come back to the clinic, okay. right? Mm -hmm. I've formed community, I wanna stay involved, I wanna keep learning. Mm -hmm. But if nobody moved on and the clinic was 40 people a night, right, in this mm -hmm. tiny room that's mm -hmm. meant to really serve four to six a night, yeah. it really needed another space. Okay. We needed another place where people can continue to share stories, continue to get updates about legislation, and then find ways for people to have what we call acts of solidarity and resistance. Okay. So as this foreclosure process continues and you're in it, you still need to be in community. And the mm -hmm. clinic isn't that place. Okay. Right? There's another space. And okay. so that's how we started. So you started the foreclosure resistors? It's folks that came through the clinic and okay. wanted another space to keep learning and keep forming community. Right. Okay. And did you actually initiate that or did they? They kept coming back and we needed to put them okay. out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a very symbiotic relationship, uh -huh. right? Because, you know, we started seeing people, yeah, people were very hungry for that space mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. opportunity. And one thing that we can do is act as a resource, right? Yeah. So we were able to secure donated space at a local church, um, facilitate okay. these monthly meetings. Mm -hmm. 
um, and really create that space for community to happen outside of the legal clinic. The legal clinic and the monthly foreclosure resistors meetings are very much connected. It's the mm -hmm. same folks. And we talk about when you come to the legal clinic, you're a homeowner in foreclosure. And when you leave that first night, you become a foreclosure resistor because okay. you're fighting back. <laughs> so we're back to the civil disobedience class here. Yeah, We've come full circle, man. That's yeah. right. That's right. <laughs> but and and I understand that on your website you have this um, interesting publication called Foreclosure Resistor. Can you tell us a little sure. bit about that? That so that comes out quarterly, and it's okay. news of our way, the, all the ways that we've acted in solidarity and resisted. So mm -hmm. whether it's participating in campaigns, mm -hmm. going court support, uh, or just things that have happened at the meetings, sh uh, short stories that we've shared, mm -hmm. or ways that we've formed community. In this latest issue, we're talking about our dinner dance that we're holding okay. as a community. So <laughs> it's keeping people connected just mm -hmm. in another way. Now, what? how would it be if there's a member of the community who isn't being foreclosed on, but mm -hmm. who thinks what you do is really cool? Mm -hmm. um, okay, they could possibly donate money, mm -hmm. but what else can somebody do to mm -hmm. support you? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, there's a lot of folks that want to help out, right? yeah. which is great, and it's yeah. really encouraging uh, when we meet people like that. Mm -hmm. um, and there are lots of things that we need support with, lots okay. of actual skills, right? So we've okay. had people volunteer to help tape and record stories. We've had people volunteer to, you know, somebody has to format that newsletter, <laughs> and Karen and I don't know how to do that. So okay. we have a volunteer to do that. Um, we have legal interns that help out. Okay. Um, so there's usually some technical support mm -hmm. that somebody can provide that mm -hmm. is actually going to help us grow and be better, mm -hmm. right, as a group. So you would be... Um, you know, okay with it if somebody contacted you and said, "Hey, I can do X, Y, and Z." Yeah. yeah. Do you need it? That's you know? right. Yeah. That so would that be could really be helpful. of interest. Because right. yeah. the homeowners should be driving everything that we do, and that mm -hmm. it's a community of homeowners, mm -hmm. right? And so, if you would like to support their efforts, then mm -hmm. use the gifts, talents, resources that you have to support mm -hmm. their mm -hmm. efforts. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Now, I also understand you don't only deal with foreclosure issues; you mm -hmm. deal with a lot of different issues. So, what are some of the things that you work with? Foreclosure is the issue that we've worked on the longest, right? Okay. We've been doing this for a long time. Yeah. Um, at different parts of our work, we've worked with different community organizations. Mm -hmm. um, we used to work with food vendors in New York City. Mm -hmm. um, in what sense? Uh, food vendors that were getting ticketed and targeted by the NYPD, oh. and so we would represent them in administrative hearings. Okay. Um, we also were working with tenants mm -hmm. um, who were getting evicted because of gentrification in Chinatown and the Lower East Side. Okay. Um, we have one case pending. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But really, the work that we love to do is working with the foreclosure resistors, yeah. which is why you saw our face light up. Yeah. And so <laughs> yeah. we're transitioning now to only do that work moving mm -hmm. forward. Okay, and how, I know it's kind of impossible to make that kind of guess, but how do you see this is going? Mm -hmm. What would you say regarding um, in the future? Do you think there will be less of a trend? Do you think it will increase? What uh, would you say? I mean, I think in terms of the foreclosure resistors, we can mm -hmm. only see it getting bigger and better, mm -hmm. right? The more stories we share, the mm -hmm. more outreach we do, the more homeowners will get involved. Mm -hmm. The hope is to have a broad base, mm -hmm. a large base of homeowners who are fighting back against the banks, mm -hmm. and for us to come up with long-term long campaigns together mm -hmm. and organizing mm -hmm. strategies to finally hold these banks accountable. Mm -hmm. um, we can't forecast exactly what those campaigns will be because it yeah. will be homeowner-led, but that's the plan. Mm -hmm. the plan plan is to have long-term structural change mm -hmm. led by homeowners who are affected by foreclosure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, on the other side, you've got banks that um, a lot of times are not really liable for their own actions. <laughs> and you know, Never their friends liable. are in government. Right. And, you well, know. Even today, they're saying, right, um, five years later, right, here we are, we're in the same place, nobody's been criminally prosecuted, yeah. the lobbyists are pushing little regulation we have, making mm -hmm. sure that there is no regulation. Uh, there's just, there's no accountability whatsoever on a structural level, none. Yeah, and I don't see that as improving. You yeah, know? Oh and no. so on the other side, you can, you can, you know, structure your stuff, but it's, it, but it is very inspiring, like a David and Goliath kind of <laughs> story, right. you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And just very, very quickly in closing, how do you keep your, your inspiration and your, your fight? There's a lot of, <laughs> there's just a lot of energy, you know, mm -hmm. like people, 
when we started out doing this work, this is what we wanted, right? Mm -hmm. We wanted homeowners who were fighting back, and we wanted mm -hmm. to be able to support them and work mm -hmm. alongside of them. And we, mm -hmm. we realized that once we created that community space, right. mm -hmm. people really became energized and did a lot. And mm -hmm. so every week, we meet new homeowners who are ready to fight back and just needed mm -hmm. the place to go mm -hmm. every week or every month and the opportunity to participate, like in court support mm -hmm. um, and in story sharing. And mm -hmm. so that's inspiring in and of itself. Like mm -hmm. when we go to court as attorneys, it's a very disempowering experience for us, right? Because okay. it's an inefficient system, because yeah. the judges are pro-bank. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But at our weekly legal clinics and in the monthly meetings, mm -hmm. we see that fighting back does have a real effect mm -hmm. on people. It's a transformative experience right. and being able to see that also transforms us and the mm -hmm. way that we interact with the court system. Civil disobedience, man. Yeah. <laughs> and, and in some ways, so. <laughs> you know, it's like, what else is there? Right. Yeah. <laughs> that what is the choice except for to keep going and keep trying, yeah. right? So on that very optimistic <laughs> note, I thank you so much for having joined thank us. You. It was very, very inspiring, oh, very, very lovely. interesting. So. Um, once again, thank you very much, Jay Kim, and thank you very much, Karen Gargam Gargamelli, yes. who are co-founders of the and staff attorneys at New York's Common Law. Now, what's very, very important to get from this is that, um, one, you're not alone, two, you have more power mm -hmm. than you think, and three, you've got support and a community that are on your side. We would highly encourage you, whether you're facing foreclosure or not, to visit their website and to see what's out there, volunteer your skills, or go to a meeting and find out more, because it's it's available, and uh, civil disobedience. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much for having joined us. Yeah.